Hi, I'm Jerry James Stone, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make a delicious broccoli pesto mac and cheese. This is a really great recipe for a couple of reasons. One, who doesn't love mac and cheese? Secondly, if you're looking for a fun way to sneak more veggies into your diet, or say your kid's diet, this broccoli pesto makes it super, super easy. So let me show you how. Okay, so to start with, we're gonna take a food processor and we're gonna make our pesto, which is gonna be made with just three ingredients, some walnuts, some broccoli, and some olive oil. Now, I love fresh broccoli, but if you don't like fresh broccoli and you prefer it cooked, you can quickly blanch this too, but I'm gonna use fresh broccoli just so you know. The first thing that I'm gonna do is add the walnuts to the food processor. Now, here's a little secret of mine. They say that you can just throw everything into a food processor and it's all good to go, you just chop it up, but I find it doesn't work that well. The reason is, is that the food processor prefers, <laughs> well, okay, it works better in a food processor if the things that you're chopping are of like at least equal size. So if you throw everything in and it's like differently chopped, it's gonna not work as nicely for processing those ingredients. So I'd like to start out with some of the more difficult ones and kind of work my way down. So first we're gonna do the walnuts. Now we're gonna add in our broccoli. Now we're gonna go ahead and chop the broccoli. Okay, so we've finally chopped the walnuts. We've pulsed the heck out of the broccoli. Now we're gonna add in our olive oil to make it a pesto. Now that we've made our pesto, just go ahead and take that out of the food processor and we're gonna make our mac and cheese. Okay, so this is a really great way just to add more vegetables into whatever you're eating. Easy way to sneak in stuff into your kid's diet if they're maybe not broccoli fans. All out of there, okay. Okay, so now we're on to the mac and cheese part of the broccoli pesto mac and cheese. We're gonna make a really simple cheese sauce, cook some pasta, throw it in there and mix it all together. We first start out with melting some butter. We're basically gonna make a roux, which is butter and flour. So go ahead and melt the butter. The melting butter just smells so good, right? Okay, so we've melted the butter. Now we're gonna add in the flour. So here's a little trick that I like to do. I take a little tiny sifter, you can use a regular flour sifter, and put the flour in that. That way I evenly distribute the flour throughout the butter just helps prevent those clumps from happening, which when you're making a roux is really important. And just mix it all together. And just keep adding that into the pan. Now, one of the things that can be really deceiving when you're making a cheese sauce from scratch is you have the butter and you keep adding in all this flour and it just keeps getting more and more like a paste. But that's okay, because you're gonna thin it out with milk and heat, so it's all good but it can kind of be a little on the stressful side if you've never done it before. You wanna do this over a really low heat. The idea is there's different levels of roux. You can kind of brown the butter, like if you're making jambalaya or something like that, but you definitely don't wanna do that in this case. Now I'm gonna slowly add in the milk and just kind of work those pasty, floury, buttery parts into it. The key to making a really good roux and a really good cheese sauce is patience. You know what, if you like to cook like I do, this is the perfect time to subscribe if you've never seen one of my videos before. If there's something that you wanna see, drop a comment. And if you like what I'm doing so far, hey, give me a thumbs up. Just keep slowly adding in that milk. The reason I do this slowly is I don't wanna overwhelm it. We're trying to have a nice evenly thick sauce. It's almost there. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat a little bit and go ahead and whisk it just to remove all of the pasty parts from there. And all those little bits around the side. Now we're gonna bring the mixture to a really low simmer. It's really important to do this because you wanna cook that flour or the sauce is gonna taste kind of doughy. So we're gonna bring up the heat just a little bit, just to a low simmer, don't overdo it. Okay, so it just started to simmer. You can see all the steam coming up. So we're just gonna let it cook for about a minute, maybe a little bit longer, not too long, just enough to cook the flour, whisking while it's simmering. And then we're gonna completely turn off the heat 
so we can work on our cheese. Now this is really important. You don't wanna add the cheese when you have direct heat because it can cause it to seize up. The fat will separate and you'll just have a hot mess. So you wanna slowly melt in that cheese. Okay, turn off the heat here. And I'm just gonna keep whisking that to sort of even out the heat. I love mac and cheese. It's one of my favorite comfort foods. And there's so many different ones from garlic mac and cheese to chipotle. You can have it spicy, savory, all sorts of different cheeses. If you have a favorite mac and cheese, let me know what it is. The heat is off. It's still kind of simmering a bit. So I'm just gonna kind of remove it from the heat to get it to cool down a little bit. Okay, so before I add in the cheese, I'm gonna add in my salt, a little bit of cracked pepper. I think it's finally ready to add in the cheese. So for this one, I'm using a couple different uh, cheddars, just a regular cheddar and a white cheddar. And the, the key to mac and cheese is to add it in slowly. You don't wanna overwork the sauce. Just add it in, let the heat from the actual liquid melt the cheese and then slowly kind of mix that in and then just add in the next batch. And just gently mix that in. Get all the cheese covered by the sauce and then add in a little bit more. And just keep doing this in batches until it's fully incorporated. Now, if the sauce cools down and it's not melting the cheese, you can use heat to force it, just be really careful. You wanna use a really low heat and you don't wanna leave it in direct contact for too long because if you get it too hot, the fats separate from the cheese and it just seizes up, the solids seize up and it never goes back, no matter how hard you try. This broccoli pesto mac and cheese is a wonderful recipe for sneaking veggies into your diet. Like I said, if you wanna get your kids to eat more broccoli, but if they really put up a fight, they won't even know. So while I'm doing this, I've actually cooked the pasta. I'm gonna use a whole wheat elbow pasta. And there's a real important part for when you're actually adding pasta to any sauce. You never wanna rinse it. You never wanna drain it. You just wanna scoop it out with a slotted spoon from whatever you cooked it in and add it directly to the sauce. The reason for that, the water from the pasta has all that starch from the, the pasta being cooked in it. And those starches actually make whatever sauce you're using, whether it's a marinara sauce or a cream sauce, just a little extra creamier. Now the concept behind that is it's made with flour, just like we used a flour to thicken up the milk and make a roux and make a creamier, thicker sauce. It's that same sort of concept. And just keep mixing it in a little bit at a time. A couple tricks that I do in order to make the cheese melt faster is take it out of the fridge earlier. Let it come to room temperature because it's just gonna unfold and combine that much easier. If it's all cold, then it's gonna take a little bit longer. There we go, it's looking so good. And finally, that last little bit. And yeah, one for me. So now we're at that final stage. I'm just gonna take a whisk to help get all the bumps out. Now you notice the cheese sauce is a little on the thick side. And like I said, the reason for that is, is we're not gonna strain or rinse our pasta. We're gonna add it directly to the sauce and that's gonna help it combine. Let's get all the, as many extra bits out as I can right now. Okay, that looks really good. It does like to get caught in the whisk, but that's okay, because then I get to try it. Oh yeah, so good. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> so what I like to do for taking my pasta, I have one of these little like kind of strainer type things. Just go in there, scoop the pasta out, give it a couple shakes to get as much of the liquid off as I possibly can, and then add it right in. Just get a couple of those in there. Like I said, the water is not your enemy here. Like it's really your friend. It really does help mix the pasta in and make it a really nice, creamy and smooth mac and cheese sauce. I'm using a whole wheat macaroni, by the way. Okay, so let's fold in some of that and just start to mix that in ever so slowly. 
And you can see that the, the cheese sauce is loosening up as a result of the pasta water that's still attached. Those starches are your friend. Like when it comes to making a marinara sauce, it's really important. Never ever drain your pasta. And never add olive oil to your pasta water. It's really important. So if you wanna know how to like properly make your pasta, be sure to check out my video on properly salting your water and how to prep pasta for like the best pasta each time. Make it perfectly. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna add in more of the macaroni. Let's keep adding that in. I mean, whole wheat macaroni, broccoli pesto, you forget that you're making this great mac and cheese, right? It, it's healthy, kinda. And then just keep folding, oh. <laughs> keep folding that together carefully, not, sh <laughs> not shooting it around like I just did. The pan's getting a little full. Once this is fully incorporated, we'll add it to a mixing bowl and we'll fold in some of the broccoli pesto. Okay, so now we're gonna transfer our mac and cheese. It smells so good. So, uh, just kidding. <laughs> I probably actually wouldn't do that. Okay, last little scoop there. Okay, so we're just gonna add in some scoops of our broccoli pesto, and then just gently fold that in. Adding more as you need. And then top it all off with a little chopped parsley. So you have broccoli mac and cheese. It's super tasty. I'm gonna give it a try. Make sure I get a nice piece of that pesto and all that, super good. Hmm. Like I said, you don't have to pre-cook the broccoli. It's a great way to sneak more veggies in to anything that you're eating or someone that needs to eat healthier. It's really, really, really delicious. I think you're gonna like it. If you like this recipe, give me a thumbs up. And hey, you know what? I love to cook, and if you do too, I release new videos every single week, so subscribe. And if there's something that you wanna see, just drop a comment below. I'll see you guys next time. I'm gonna go eat more of this.